Introducing Christian Ed Wednesday. Stay tuned to the end and you'll hear about how you can get six original Christian audiobooks free of charge. First, my backstory. Twenty years ago, I was sat in university studying the 1859 revival. I was a Presbyterian, the son of a Presbyterian minister. I had been educated in the leading former Presbyterian grammar school in the land. Presbyterianism was the biggest Protestant denomination in Ulster, but instead of being a tower of strength fighting God's battles against secular humanism, Presbyterians were more like water flowing into whatever mould they found themselves in, colourless, odourless and tasteless. This lack of distinctiveness was most glaring in education. Presbyterians used to educate their own in their own Christian schools, but now nearly everyone sent their children to secular humanist state schools. With the clergy's blessing, the only struggle around schooling was for ministers' wives and daughters to get the best jobs in the best secular humanist schools, where the most pious Presbyterians would teach agnostic versions of history, politics, economics, biology and geography. This disconnect throbbed like a migraine in my young mind, so I began looking for answers in my father's library amongst the great Presbyterian scholars such as Cornelius Van Til and J. Gresham Mason. These men were salty, not tasteless. They claimed every area of life, particularly education, for Christ. Gresham Mason spoke like a prophet on the floor of Congress against secular humanist schools. The gap between the cultic Sunday Presbyterianism of Ulster and the vigorous real-world Presbyterianism of these men was striking. Could it really be true that my denomination and all other Christian churches were more faithful disciples of Immanuel Kant than of Jesus Christ? Their devotion to keeping the spirit realm separate from the real world was absolute. Their devotion to the command of Christ to disciple the nation was missing in inaction. Back to this history tutorial. Marx was there present to give an answer to the causes of the 1859 revival. Social, political and economic factors triggered the event, but the Holy Spirit was absent, voiceless. So, at the apex of my formal education, studying the most spiritual and ecclesiastical topic possible, God and his covenant were, as usual, absent. There never will be room for the God of the Bible in Satan's back pocket. I realised in a flash that Christians needed their own schools and homeschools. In this podcast stroke video stroke blog series, I want to reach out to those at the margin, the God-fearing, those uncomfortable with the status quo who are looking for answers to the education problem. I want to share with you the theological, philosophical and practical inspiration that will, with the Holy Spirit's blessing, empower you to engage in Christian education where you are, to start Christian schools, homeschools and more, in my homeland or wherever you are. So, go to lrnteach.com and subscribe for updates on the latest episodes. As a thank you, I will give you six original Christian audiobooks. You will receive Reconstructing Missions by Bodjadar Marinoff, The Great Decommission by Stephen C. Perks, The Christian Philosophy of Education Explained by Stephen C. Perks, A Defense of the Christian State by Stephen C. Perks, The Problem of the Gifted Speaker by Stephen C. Perks, and The Christian Passover, Agape Feast or Ritual Abuse by Stephen C. Perks. All narrated by yours truly, Mr. Nathan Conkey. I really look forward to pointing you to the greatness of God in education in the real world. Until another Wednesday, ciao.